After the 2017 general elections in the country, chaos and demonstrations reigned in Kenya for close to three months after followers of Raila Odinga contested election results. According to the opposition, Uel Kenyatta did not win the presidency fairly and majority decried of rigging. Raila called for the IEBC to open the election's servers as evidence, a move that was hugely protested by the government. Following this, Raila forced for his own swearing-in as the people's president a move many regarded as a coup. Kenyans expected the president to use his powers and have the ODM party leader jailed or hanged but that never happened. Speaking on Wednesday, June 22, 2022 former Jubilee Vice Chairman and a close ally to President Uru David Murad revealed what transpired at State House during the swearing-in. Murad revealed that Uru was at the time in South Africa attending a historical event when Raila was busy swearing himself in. He revealed that the military at the time was finalizing on the tactical move they would use to invade the ongoing ceremony at Uru Park and arrest Raila. However, Uru ordered the military to stand down and allow him finish his drama as it would change nothing as they had already been sworn in alongside D.P. Ruto. The first option was uh, Eugene Wamalwa in uh, 2013. We were basically looking at the numbers. They were going to bring in more numbers to our basket than uh, the uh, Rift Valley basket. Because you know, Rift Valley is a diaspora which is very interesting. Where you have the Maasai, you have the Kalenjin, you have Kikuyus, you have everybody in the Rift Valley. You have Baluya, you have Kiki, everybody is there. So in terms of sheer numbers, we were quite happy to engage the Baluya. And that was the winning ticket for Kebake and Wamalwa, senior, the late. So, come the peace dividend issue that look, we want stability post the election. Remember we had the ICC hanging over our heads and we needed to be together to confront now the external. It's like when you have a fight in your family, and then an external guy comes, you, first you stop fighting, you deal with the external threat and the special threat. So, yes, we were in uh, South Africa, for example, the ANC was doing 106 years anniversary with uh, Zuma uh, Ramaphosa mm -hmm. and actually he's the deputy president uh, David Mamboza. And Raila was going to do this rally at uh, Urbach to try himself in and the entire security machinery was going to stop it. And I was there and the president said, no, 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 let him go ahead, remove all the policemen from uh, Urbach. After all, we have a properly sworn in government. So what? You Much be sworn as it's in? termed treason, the president allowed. No, 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 no. He will swear himself in and go home to his wife. He was not going to march to the state house. So, and I mean, by the way, Raila was very clever. That swearing in was very cleverly worded uh, to avoid the treason uh, beat. Okay? So it was something like the people's president. All right? So you have the people's president, fine. But then you have a legally elected, recognized, sworn in by the chief justice, a constitutionally in place. So that whatever you could do, unless you storm state house, uh, that is now what would be treason. All right. I think that one was a heavily guarded engagement. Very, very few people uh, were in the loop. Initially, yes, we had engaged people, some of us had engaged people like Oburu, people like uh, Joe Donde, people like Orengo, Joe Aguirre, and we were talking. And we were like, come on, you guys, why are we fighting? Why can't we come to some form of an arrangement yes. where, look, Uru is going to do his final, last and final term. After that, we are quite happy to let the best man win, and we will not be a hindrance to your succession. And yes, but the actual crafting of this thing was a highly, highly guarded. In fact, I think even if the DP was involved, he could only have been involved at the very final uh, stages after the two of them had agreed uh, about going about the handshake and 
taking the country back, where did the rain start beating us? Because this was a very personal engagement between the two of them. Was there a clause, quote unquote, uh, to involve at least and consult the deputy president in, in all this? No, I, in I believe uh, Raila has already said that uh, the deputy president had approached him uh, to engage him. All right, and I believe that formed the basis of him going to or oh, his emissaries, saying the president, "Hey." Uh, your friend here has some very funny, nasty ideas about how we can team up and probably bring you down. And then the president is like, uh huh? What is that all about? Then in that case, what is your interest? Are you, uh, your interest, uh, Kenya? Or is it your personal, whatever you're being promised? And uh, Raila, being the state man he is, decided maybe this is the wrong route to follow. And let me engage uh, His Excellency the President. He has an instrument. He's probably going home after his term. And this guy is probably going to be my competitor in 2022. And I think that was the genesis of this. Where, and Ruto himself has admitted that he had tried to approach. So you're saying the handshake the was premised between Uhuru and Raila was premised on or based on uh, the approach between DP Ruto and uh, Raila. It's on it record. Wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't in and of itself it's inspired on record. by it's, uh, the, the DP to himself. The together. It's the DP himself who has said. Okay. But uh, Jacob has said, no, no, no. His uh, motives were sinister. And what I agreed to discuss with the president was about Kenya. Okay. Let, let's.